Welcome again to D20 Theater. It's been a week off. We're back on Valentine's Day, so I hope you'll be ours this Valentine's Day as we rejoin our heroes. So Greg, yes. take it away. When last we left our heroes, then uh, Barthoon, <coughs> Thaddeus, and Osborne had finished fighting uh, Zimek, a car dreamer of the orcs, and had... Uh, taken the opportunity to not rest and instead dash madly back towards the encampment of the hill tribesmen where they had left Esteem and Basiwai and where they thought an encroachment of orcs might take place. They were right. Uh, a huge force of orcs led by G- G- Garkul, Garkul Akar, uh, who was the same orc who had taken Aberdavi right at the beginning of the campaign, uh, led his troops into battle against the fairly divided force that was left of hill tribesmen. Uh, Theoker having taken his men and gone to go and attack the Hayfork, and Eomer having taken his men to go and uh, intercede. So it was only Arden, his guys, and our two allies. Uh, the three remaining heroes arrived just uh, during the, the midst of the battle and threw themselves into combat. All five fought pretty valiantly, uh, Basuai making great use of the... Uh, Long Death Monk's ability to fear everything around her. Uh, Esteem allowed himself to be possessed by a fiend of some description to uh, give himself an edge in combat. Uh, However, uh, despite their valiant efforts, both Osborne and Thaddeus were struck low during the combat, never to rise again. Directly, pretty much as Thaddeus was was being laid low, Paladin Nullius arrived along with his force, his crusaders, and they struck down the remaining orcs, including Garku Uh He then pledged to lead a crusade against the orcs, uh, using Thaddeus as their figurehead. Uh, and I think that actually is where we leave our heroes, not really knowing what's going to happen next. All right. Well, a red sun <coughs> rises over Lythric, and a spear leans against a tree. The crusade has elected several knights who drew lots to carry Thaddeus' body. Esteem, at uh, your request, they've allowed you to join. They carry the body to a large funeral pyre where they lay it down. Atop a pyre built of of sticks atop a a stone um, altar that they've constructed of, of stray rubble and ruin from the war games the day before. As they set it up, they lay down Thaddeus's body atop the pyre, and Nullius steps forward, um, holding his sword. He, he, uh, he grips the hilt of his sword and draws it out, and raises it as he places a hand on Thaddeus's chest. And he says, Here do we consign another warrior of the light, to join the light. Up he shall rise into the sun to be with his father and lord. Loramir bless us, and light unto light. He then looks to your party to see if anyone else has words they'd like to say. For him? Yeah. <laughs> I don't imagine. You don't have to be there if you don't want. I Save your life a bunch say... Of Jumped off a cliff oh for you. Oh my gosh, I don't know if I remember how to say this. But I would say that Blast would remember. Um, the orc, or orc, uh, the dwarf saying, you know, go back to the rocks or whatever. Pleasant rumbling. No. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Remember when, uh, in the first episode where, or not the first episode, but the first time we went to the orc. Oh this my gosh. Dwarf. The dwarf mountain thing and we found the dead body and they were like talking and they said like to the to the stone he returns or something yeah like that. something like okay. that okay I say something like that uh, Nully is sort of narrows his eyes as you say that <laughs> it doesn't say it's another the, word it's the wrong wrong faith dude yeah a little backwards uh, I don't think mine will be much better um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I'll, I'll, I'll I, I have a little, a little something to care for this huh. um I could never see eye to eye with Thaddeus Pult from the moment we met, we were distant enemies. A silencer of mages for the cult of dawn, and a sight touch seeker of life. Truly, he did not agree with any of our ideologies, save the draconian, <laughs> but our differences never stopped him from protecting us, facing unkind odds, 
and on occasion loosing death's grip. Thalys was a fierce warrior, a powerful friend, and an example of true strength to us all. He will be missed, and he will be an invaluable companion in the end times. With a, a, a smile, a sort of forlorn smile, Nullius nods and looks to Barthun. That was really nice. Um, <laughs> that was very nice. I didn't know... I didn't know Thaddeus for long, but I knew you well. You were a good friend and a strong man. I shall see you one day in the future in Lormir's embrace. Go to the light, my friend. All right. Um, Arden, who's standing there, then says, uh, It may have been of a different faith than I, and it may have been from another part of the world. But Thaddeus fought bravely for our people. I didn't know him long. And he kind of looks to esteem, and you can see that there's something he's not saying here. But he says, But he was a man who finished what he started. And he says, <laughs> I can respect that. <laughs> Nullius says, uh, <coughs> as, as he lifts his hand from Thaddeus's chest, he says, then to the light, this brave warrior will return. The silencer uh, silenced, but not forever. For one day he shall join in the song of angels. And he holds his sword up into the sky, and it sort of sheathes with light. And he lays it down atop the pyre, which just starts to glow and burn with a radiant fire. fire. And soon, within what seems like moments, the body is gone leaving only his belongings behind, entirely unsinged. Which you guys are free to take if you needed. Um, if you needed a spear. <laughs> oh, his spear's over there, but if you needed his armor or his fancy shield. Fancy shield? Not really your thing, but no, you could if you wanted. I might take the armor. All right. <laughs> what the question, though, is... It's fireproof, right? Well, it's fire-resistant. Fire 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 fire. I already have that. Oh, oh <laughs> which is kind of, is you know, kind of productive. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Is that what I got? Would I need to get that refashioned or anything? You would need to get it refitted, yeah, yeah, if you wanted to wear it. Yeah, I figured. But you could have it and refit it later. I'll, yeah. All right. I'll hang on to it. Cool. Yeah. Um, as you march back towards Lythric, uh, down the hill and back towards the gates, you can see there are several Yarbeer who are uh, walking up to the tree that has now grown in front of the gates, laying down offerings in front of the tree. Hmm. And there's a priest of the green who's standing there, arms outstretched, just singing a hymn as each comes. Uh, the hymn is in the old speech, and it speaks of, uh, of great trees yet to grow and of seeds yet to be spread, but soon carried by the wind across the world. Very quickly, you are taking the shield, right? Did you? Uh, I did not say that. No. Do you want to take the shield? If not, I'm gonna I mean, I can't it. use it. I'm gonna, I'll hang on to Thaddeus' mm-hmm. shield as well. All right. um, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Nullius, as you pass by, just gives a nod to the tree, uh, but you can tell he feels uncomfortable with the uh, with the rituals going on there. Um, and can Arden, you sure you. Can I was to, wondering if you had words yeah. for for us. Um, you were close to I, him. Arden, Arden no. says, uh, "I'm internal." If you'll excuse me, I'm going to pay my respects to the other. And he starts walking over towards the tree. You're welcome to join him if you like. Yeah, totally. I'm also gathering tree, like seeds and stuff. Okay, and cool. And putting them in my pouch. All right, cool. Anybody else doing anything? Um, is there any like wildflowers or anything anywhere? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they, they're, it, it's interesting because most of the flowers at this time of year are totally dead. But just around that tree, there's no snow. It's just a glade of almost mm-hmm. summer-like weather. Mm-hmm. And there's, uh, there's flowers growing there. I don't know if I want to pick those flowers. <laughs> I'm just thinking bringing flowers. Like a, a winter bloom. Yeah, yeah there would be a couple winter blooms. So. Okay, I'll take a couple of those, um, and I'm going to walk over to the tree, and uh, I'll kneel to the tree, um, and I'm going to hold the flowers in my uh, hand, and I'm going to uh, shoot a quick puff of flame onto them so that they are burning a little bit. Okay. Uh, and I will set them down and say, Ash to ash, and with ash comes new life. I'll miss you, short stuff. 
<laughs> All right. And then I get up. <laughs> All right, and the uh, the green priest continues singing his hymn. I'll uh, I'll catch up to Nullius, who didn't seem like uh, being too involved with it, um, and just kind of uh, again kind of wanted to talk about Oz a little bit. Uh, I'll say to him, I was born under Thorn was quite a different story from Sadius. Uh, this man was reckless to the point of foolishness. Why he approached fanaticism and his uh, forms varied in importance. <laughs> Inspiration. <laughs> These qualities move me to dislike him greatly, but I find myself impressed by him instead. Oz showed me that which I would never have seen had I remained on my island home. A passion. A fiery passion for his god that would burn down groves to grow them back stronger. I learned from him more than should be possible, and I think he is now doing all the work that he deserves. All right. Um, and uh, Nullius looks to you and he says, Yes, I'm, I'm sure that's... Yes. <laughs> he, he's clearly <laughs> uncomfortable with the man. He says, I appreciate all that all of you have done. Even yourself. And he holds out a hand and he says, I am not one to usually ally myself with members of the cult of life, but you were a friend to Thaddeus, and I hope you will be a friend to the crusade. Your people, if nothing else, are, are brave and, and wise. And you represent them well. Hope to continue doing so. He says, there's plans to be made, you know. This battle, this changes things. The orcs know now. They know that their enemies gather. They won't act so subtly as they have. Thus far they've targeted the small villages. They've, they've used subterfuge. Now they will be on the march. This battle was the beginning of the real war. And if it has forced the orcs out into the open, then it was a great victory. Yes. Yes, it was. I hope that your friend's spear and your friend's staff will continue to lead this war. And soon, soon we will put down these orcs, and we will save this realm. He says, I must retire. There is much to be done this afternoon. I have spoken with Arden. We're to have a meeting. And shortly behind us follows the Princess Anna of, uh, of the Hayfolk. She will be there as well. Unlikely allies, but allies are needed in this time. Hopefully we can all put aside our differences. How else would we have been here today? <laughs> he hesitates for a moment and says, I would appreciate if you and your party would be there at the meeting. You've been the driving force around everything that's happened thus far. It's only right that you continue to take a stand. Then we will do so, in the absence of our leader Thaddeus. Then it seems you'll need a new one. And he gives you a nod, and he heads off towards his tent. Uh, those of you who are near the tree can hear... Um, the the druid now singing uh, but since it fell into my lot that I should rise and you should not I'll gently rise and softly call good night and joy be to you all so fill to me the parting glass and drink a help whate'er befalls the gently rise and softly call good night and joy to all. And uh, at that, he, he lowers his arms um, and he bows his head to those of you who, uh, who came to offer blessings to, uh, to Thaddeus, or to uh, Osborne. And he says, Your friend, I saw what he did. There are a few green priests that can channel it, channel the power like that. 
I didn't know the man, but I would have loved to. You were lucky you were. Thank you for blessing us with his presence. And he turns away and leaves. All right. Mm. Does anyone want to do anything before the negotiations? You said we leveled up, right? Level eight, yeah. Yeah, right. level eight, like that. Just wanted to make sure. Everybody's not crazy. <laughs> what are you gonna do? That's an AS. So I, 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 I already did it. I oh, did it. What you do? I took two points of con to raise my con. Uh, yeah. That's worth it. Yeah. So I went from sixty health to seventy-eight. Dang. And good. that'll also uh, raise your save for the blast and dust, right? Uh, well, I'll uh, cast a first level spell on myself right before the uh, the meeting. Uh, Bewitch. Uh -huh. This is uh, from the Lost Spells. <laughs> I just added D4 to Perception and Persuasion checks for now. Okay. Okay. Cool. In case you need it. <laughs> All right. Well, um, then if no one else has anything else, at that point you um, you head into the meeting and you can see that Arden and several of his uh, his chief advisors are there. There uh, there is a red priest in particular, um, but also a uh, a white priest. Hmm. And you can see that Nullius is here, along with several other night paladins and night clerics. Uh, as uh, you can, you also see that the uh, the meeting is set outside of Lightreek. It's mm -hmm. set in a tent near to where the battleground was. Uh, one of the Crusades tents. Um, as you enter, Arden and his men are sort of walking up alongside you nearby. And Nullius and his men are inside, and as you enter the tent, you can hear uh, the, the men complaining that they're not being allowed into Lythreek. Uh, at that point, he walks <coughs> Arden and his folks, and uh, Arden says, Are we all met? What is this princess you told us about? Nullius says, I don't know. She said she'd arrive shortly. We can wait for her, or we can begin without her. I don't care either way. What about you lot? God, we are ready when you are. Uh, Nullius, did you not cross paths with Thiakar and uh, his ilk? No, we came round a different way. We came by the sea. And the prince is with you? No, she was saying she would meet us here shortly. Mm. Then maybe she was waylaid by Thiakar. I certainly hope not. If she was... Then she's either dead by Fiakr's hand, and our revenge is got by Ymir. Or she'll be here shortly, with Ymir in tow. I can guarantee that he didn't fall to Fiakr. So, since we don't know, I suppose we should begin. Are we all agreed? We will brief the... <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not here, so I didn't... We Thaddeus will, is just like... <laughs> we will brief the princess on her arrival. Excellent. You can smell the uh, the smoldering orc bodies all around <laughs> that have been piled up to burn. The stench filling your nostrils. And Nullius says, We'll get right down to brass tacks then. Here's what we need of the Yabe. He looks straight to Arden. We need your loyalty to our crusade. We want you to join us and march with us against the orcs. You are on a bound already. I suppose this will not be an issue. And we want knight commanders over each legion of your troops. To aid with communication, of course. We trust your commanders, but ours will keep us in line. We also want an assurance of a seizure of hostilities upon any Greenway worshipping lords. Any that swear fealty to the church are off limits for Yabir attack. In exchange... We won't strike back at you. Are we understood? Arden uh, scoffs, and he says, I'm not going to be giving over the command of my troops to your people. My troops are Yarbir, and they will be led by Yarbir. We shall have an assurance of total Yarbir independence. We shall have independent command of our troops, complete dominion over the Briogan Hills, regardless of any worshipping lords or not. 
and we shall have respect for the Arbir tradition and the religions. At this, you can immediately see Nullius's face <laughs> sort of sulking. He's not ready for this. Uh, you can tell he's not really a negotiator. <laughs> <laughs> he's a knight paladin. Nullius, if I may. The, Goose. The hill tribes have lived on their own for as long as they have and have not imploded since the conquerors. I have met with Arden over these past two days and understand that he is of right mind as a commander. I do not think it would fit the Arbeer to be led by your troops in this case. Our troops are experienced military commanders. But the Arbeer have fought little more than farmers with pitchforks. And the Arbeer have never received orders from your commanders. And or they never will. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, now, it is fitting that each of us would not encroach on the other's beliefs for this truce, as it were. I don't think either side would prefer to have a war on two fronts. This is agreeable to both parties, I think. I suppose this is agreeable. Provided again that the lords that worship the Greenway are not chosen as targets for raiders. You may raid any other lords you like. <laughs> but lords worshipping the Greenway are off limits and under the protection of the Crusade. Their troops will flock to our side. <laughs> again, I must interject. Arden, is this raiding something that is frequently occurring? Of course it is. It's the Arbia tradition. If we don't raid, we don't live. They're not farmers. Oh, okay. oh, They're right. like the Iron Islands. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, in this case, uh, the war as it is, it would be best not to split your troops between fighting with the orcs and feeding themselves. I, I think, uh, now, yes, we could likely provide the uh, Yardir with the food and uh, shelter that they require and that they earn from. We the don't food. need handouts. Oh, this is, uh, this is certainly not a handout. But we won't be attacking your lords. We'll simply take what we need from the orc cities that we retake. Any fallen cities will take what they've left behind, what the orcs took from them. We'll claim our looting rights. Nellius uh, looks at him <laughs> aghast and says, Those things in those cities, the food, the, the supplies, the, the goods, the gold, the silver, those belong to people who who have been displaced. It should be waiting there for them when they return. Mm, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I suppose then we could just uh, take what we want from any uh, green way worshipping lords along the way. That seems like a, a valid strategy. Wouldn't you say, Nolius? <laughs> and just his, his jaw just drops and you can see uh. he's, he, he's clenching his fist now. Just very frustrated. Arden, um, how useful would be gold, silver, on this excursion? Gold that would not belong to the orcs. Surely they have stockpiled on their own what valuables they need, and that could be gained from, from your raiding day. But the individual homes of these, these villagers who are, as Nolis puts it, displaced, should be left largely unaltered. Um... Roll a persuasion check. Yes, okay. <laughs> Come up with the D4. Oh, with the D4. Here we go. Steam, you can do it. That's, uh, I don't have great charisma, but I'm looking at 15 on the dice. Okay. It's 15. <laughs> <laughs> he shrugs and he says, fine, we won't touch any homes. We'll only loot the castles and the manors. <laughs> no, he says, those are lords. Those are the homes of lords. Lords who are likely dead. Lords who may have heirs that will want to reclaim their lands. If they wanted to claim them, they shouldn't have lost them in the first place. <laughs> oh. Nullius shakes his head and he says, he looks to you and he says, and how are we to tell a lord that all his lands and treasure are, are gone from him? That when he returns home, he will have no gold with which to, to raise an army. Um, hmm. well. <laughs> you guys can pitch in too. Uh, you can't. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Why do they need gold at all? Do the Arby or yeah. trade with other people? They do, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
So um, they trade, but they also just steal stuff. Right. They, they're not into farming, right. but they use gold. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're, they're nuts. <laughs> kind of. Mm-hmm. Well. Well. They also like it for its, uh, like, uses, like, jewelry and prizes yeah. and things like that. Yeah. I think it is important to keep in mind that uh, I believe your people prefer not to live in these uh, well-built castles that the lords occupy. Of course, the lords... We're not going to take the castles, merely the treasure within them. And I'm certain that a lord who has his land certainly has the means to gain that gold back once his land is returned to him. Once we have freed his land from the orcs and other... He looks to Nullius. Go ahead and roll a persuasion check uh, nice. towards Nullius. He looks to Nullius and he says, uh, After all, you people love taxes. <laughs> Consider it a, a tax for our service and liberate in that time. That's what I was about to say. going to be a nine. <laughs> maybe I should have rolled my ports today. Maybe I should have done that. Maybe you should, maybe, 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 should do that right now. That's, well, that's, that's a couple good. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I've got a nine on that persuasion. <laughs> Nullius says, uh, there's a difference between a tax and extortion. In this case, it, it, as unfortunate as it is, we have had to mobilize the your armies to take back these lands <coughs> the lords uh, have lost. I do not think it reasonable that the lords would expect everything to be intact after such a, a massive undertaking in returning their lands to me. You were saying that um, if they didn't know the Arbia took it, if they thought the orcs had, it wouldn't hurt them. Those are your words, not mine. (laughs) He looks to to you for a moment as though he's about to refuse, but then says, The weapons of the enemy. Uh, Yes. Very well, uh, this is agreeable. Oh, yes. This is agreeable. (laughs) He's gonna fall. Uh, <laughs> Arden, uh, Arden smiles and says, "Then I'm glad we're all agreed." Now, in regards to those commanders that you'd like to put over my men, we don't need those. My men will be fighting very well on their own. Thank you. We have our own commanders who have gone to war many times. War raiding is not a war. There's a difference between. And you hear, "My lord, my lords." And in runs a uh, a Yarbeer oh. at that point. Well, no. As he runs in, he says, there's something that you'll want to see. Morskoth. And Arden oh. says, uh, well then, excuse me, I'll return shortly. And he heads off. We'll be back to you guys in a minute. Oh. Ooh. So... Cyril, oh. you see approaching um, Arden, accompanied by a, uh, a young Yarbeer scout. The two of them start heading out of a, a large tent towards you, where you've got this pallet on ropes mm-hmm. being pulled behind you. Describe to me what they see. Uh, what they see is a uh, reasonably tall, quite slender, but kind of whipcord muscled style of uh, Narween. Elf, uh, an elf of the Isle of Mystery the, of Narwain, dragging um, a, a, a rough sled that's just kind of from cast off logs and stuff bound together with just rope and torn up shirts and whatever else, uh, on which he is dragging Eom. Uh, currently. Currently in werebear form. Uh huh. Yeah, it shifted. Uh, he's, he's bound uh, just by the, by the hands and feet. And, uh, and has a, a rough sort of muzzle uh, that, that was clearly put on after the transformation uh, by, by somebody who just put their hands right next to his mouth uh, to put that on. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's right. what I've got. And you can see Eomer has scars and cuts and arrows piercing his hide um, all over. You can see that his, uh, his shirt is sort of torn and hanging loose. Um, it's clear this was a violent, sudden transformation, and that he took quite a lot of injuries. Uh, Arden says, uh, Arden says, what happened here? Your pardon. Uh, I have, uh, seem to have located one of your 
countryman, this one? Uh, see you, man. Where did you find him? Along the way to the AFOC, I found uh, a scene of uh, rather complete carnage. Uh, there were very few survivors. Uh, it appeared that uh, two contingents of your fellows were attacking one another. Is there some sort of civil dispute going on? Something like that, yeah. And the one that this man was with? The one? Uh, the group that he was with? Uh, did I, they win? Did I'm they... afraid that I saw very few uh, moving farms at all. This one Eight had some life in him yet, but, uh, well, he was, he was not terribly easy to restrain. As they talk, I'd like to be healing the airman. All right, uh, sure. And you can oh, see... Oh, did you run out with him? Yeah, and you could. Yeah, did you come with him? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll, as, I'll say I went out. You can see him. as you approach, he sort of. <laughs> he seems like a wild beast right now. I'm Arden, gonna, I'm gonna pause talking to Arden and kneel down and start whispering something uh, into to Emer's ear. He uh, roll an animal handling. <laughs> <laughs> Not persuasion. Uh, no, no. Uh, twenty. All right. He seems to calm just a bit, and Arden leans down and he says. And how did you know him from a bear? In a state like this, he's... Uh, I hate to see him like this. He was wearing scraps of trousers. Yeah, I can see that. He um, he grabs the back of Eamor's head, and Eamor starts to, to writhe again. But he holds him tight, and he, he kind of points his face at his own. And he's, come on, you old bear. You're not giving up yet. Come on! And he looks up, and he, he looks to the red priest that was with him. And he says, go, find him some of the leaf, go. And uh, off he goes. Um, uh, he says, he says, who are you? How did you find him? I am Serene Mardit. Uh, I was here while well, I was uh, on the way to the AFOC looking for, by the grove, one of these. <laughs> <laughs> Along with, uh, there were four others, there was a, a fellow... A Guaronian, uh, an affling, and a dwarf. There's, there's two of them now. Have you misplaced them? Something like that. Uh, uh, well, uh, I am dispatched by the sacred grove of Nawin uh, to locate these travelers and uh, aid them in their efforts, whatever they might be. Uh, I was on my way to the AFOC, and as I say, I happened across this uh, scene of uh, carnage. I, I knew that there was a gathering of the uh, tribesmen taking place. Uh, somewhere on the area, and I fashioned this lead and dragged him this way. Narween sent you to help out with this war. <laughs> I do not question when they grow up since commands. Uh, I was sent because the champion's words, I believe, were we shall send these travelers the aid that they merit. And so here I am. <laughs> well, that bodes well. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he says, uh, that dude is rude. <laughs> uh, soon the red priest returns uh, with some belladonna herbs. Um, and he takes them and he applies them and, and helps... Uh, he, he, sort of, he sort of takes them and, and grinds them in a mortar and pestle into a salve and he applies it to uh, Ymir's body. And he, uh, he then takes some more crushed herbs and he, he force feeds them to Ymir, taking off the muzzle. Careful. I'm trained with these, says the Red Priest. Right. You've seen this before. Mm. Uh, he starts saying a prayer, and he, he snaps to two, uh, two Yarbir nearby, and he says, Take him. Take him to the stable, lash him up. Make sure he's not freed until he's turned. But there's no as soon as he is. And he turns back to Arden, and he says, I'll keep an eye. You needn't worry. Arden looks to you and says, uh, Well then, if you're the aid that was sent us, perhaps you shall see the aid we've got. Nothing would please me more, I'm sure. This way. And at that, you can see, actually, coming over the hill, uh, seven horses uh, on them, six knights. <laughs> An army of orcs! <laughs> uh, you, you can see on them. Led, led by a pale man with one eye. <laughs> You can see that the uh, the horses, six of them, are um, mounted knights, and one of them, uh, upon which rides uh, rides Princess Anneral, ah, who, who you guys know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, and uh, Nullius steps out of the tent and he says, 
Arden, our business must continue. Our guests have arrived. And uh, down she rides. As she dismounts, she uh, she gives uh, her horse to one of the knights and says, take care of that for me, will you? And turns back to uh, you lot and she says, so, what did I miss? She in the <laughs> tent now? What? She in the we tent all now? Gone she she's like right outside the tent currently. Oh, okay. But you, you all are, I assume. Uh, oh, I, I would figure I was staying inside. Oh, okay, cool. While this is happening, everyone's doing really important things. Can I just be playing with my pupper? Sure. Cool. Are you outside the tent or still inside the tent? I'll be outside the tent. Okay. All right. Playing with the pupper. Yeah. All right. Cool. See the you were looking for. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> cousin. Um. Mm-hmm. Do I like you? I can't remember. Uh, Narweens don't really like anybody. They're they're the least hostile to Guayronians, but they don't really like anybody. So that's that's how I greet you, though. Hail, cousin. I'll look very confused. Kitty. I'm a simpleton. All right. Oh, I know. <laughs> and I guess I'll I'll go. Uh, is she going inside the the princess lane? <clears throat> Yeah, she's coming in. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm walking in there. All right, and as you recap the previous discussion for uh, the two of them... Mm-hmm. Um, we'll catch the princess up to speed on fellow. everything with orcs and yeah. people and dying. People and people dead. Yeah. Um, and, you know, she, she expresses her sympathies and all that. And she says, uh, Well, the Hayfolk is ready to commit to this war. Unconditionally. <sighs> really? That is so refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> <It's brilliant. laughs> I am tired. <laughs> she says, um, right. Unlike the crusade or the Yabir, we do not have the privilege to sit on the sidelines. We will fight, for we must save our allies and trading partners. And we will do our best in this fight. I personally have been sent to accompany. In, in to battle? <laughs> Wherever you might go. I represent the interests of the Hayfolk. My father trusts me with this. Pardon me, you are from the Hayfolk? The Hayfolk, yes. And you are the leader or an heir to the leader of this uh, particular territory, accompanied by a group of vagabonds? I can handle myself, thank you very much. Yeah, I, would uh, include uh, myself I stand in behind well. her and I become her <coughs> yes man. And anytime she's like, I can handle this, I'm like, mm hmm, girlfriend. Just right. like that? Yeah. She's a hype man. Yeah. All right. Because I'm tired. Of this girl's campy and battle thing. I lean over. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not girl, She's it's ruler. Point. I don't care. I lean over um, to this girl and just say, Welcome to the party. <laughs> Most pleasant introduction. I'm Expect sure. exactly this always. <laughs> <laughs> this. You were the only hope I had. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. Oh. I'll prove myself in battle, you'll see. Mm. Oh. Right, so I'll, <laughs> I'll take a seat, uh, I guess, near near the, uh, the the fellow who has not been introduced to me and go, Ah, you are the fellow. All right. <laughs> I am very busy. Ah. <laughs> Perhaps we will do interactions after this discussion. <laughs> yes. That's pretty um, normal, too. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's also not countermanding any preconceived notions that I had about fellows before <laughs> this discussion. Um... So I'll, I'll say Yeah, you're breaking mold. He's thing. not. As as, uh, She's as, as refreshing it is that the, <laughs> the A4 will join our battle. Without these conditions, we did have conditions on the table uh, between the Crusade and the Yarvir. Um, our most recent issue was, of course, the uh, command of these units. Uh, as I said before, uh, I do not think that the Yarvir would listen uh, or follow the orders of... Commanders from the Crusade. However, well, I think it may benefit both sides if we do cross contaminate the armies. Say, have uh, battalions or um, groups, as it were, of Yarbir in the fold of the Crusade and vice versa. As Nali, as you say, to provide communication both uh, between the armies and back to the main camp. Roll, uh, this is going to be a little different. Okay. Roll an intelligence persuasion check because <laughs> here you're relying on tactical strategy uh, and military knowledge. They do have That's different cool. skill sets, wouldn't you say? Your people and the uh, Knights of Thermica. You and yours are more fierce warriors in single combat. I and the Knights of Thermica are pansies and armor. Well, how many of your men have ever fought in a shield war? Okay, 
if you can't see me in half. That's mm. a 21. Um, Nullius says, this is acceptable. You leave soldiers with us, and we will send some with you. Uh, at that, Arden says, fine. I'll give you some men, but <laughs> when they go off berserking and raiding, don't look at me. <laughs> uh, I'm sure they'll be fine. Sure, that'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> You're sure. Yeah. All right. Um, Show me. Yes. <coughs> and we'll have the Briogan Hills then. Nullius nods and he says, We have no need of the hills. You may keep them. We're not here to claim territory, merely to stop the orcs. He says, Good. <laughs> then, we yeah. agree. Is that topic over? We didn't take ten minutes to talk about that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> That was easy for once. Arden shrugs and he says, well, you know, they saw reason. <laughs> Nolius says, <laughs> Nolius says, pick your battles. <laughs> oh, that's good. All right. Um, the discussions continue for a while discussing minor things as how many units will be displaced and cross-contaminated and how much of this will be going on? Who will be in charge of which armies? How many armies will do what? Which armies will be assigned to which tasks? It's all very boring. It is. It's very boring. <laughs> and soon, uh, a few it's hours later, yeah. uh, in limps Eomer, back in his normal form, ah, uh, leaning so on his staff. Uh, he says, doesn't work as much on that. Right! Well... <laughs> That didn't go quite as planned, but we did it. We did it. Siakar is no more. I don't know, but he is defeated. Mm. We brought his army down. The Hayfork saw the battle, and one of their knights, uh, one Sir Keenan, rode out to join it. Huh. Siakar, he, <coughs> he knew me and my men too well. He saw that he was surely beaten. And so he ordered his men into a furious melee with mine. And of course mine greeted it wholeheartedly. It's only later that I realised what he was doing. When we were trapped in a melee, the Hayfork soldiers wouldn't know who to target. Mm. Many of my men were cut down. He looks to Arden and he says, I wish I had your mind, friend. You might have saved more than I did. Many of my men, I think... Think. Survive the battle. We seem to be winning. And I fled. I, I saw Fiaka fleeing, fleeing. And I chased him. I followed him down, but it was a trap. Every one of his men that he had left, they surrounded me, pinned me down, shot arrows through my ankles. I couldn't help but shift. I lost it. When I came to, when I came to, there were men dead around me. I was bleeding heavily. Fiaker was nowhere to be seen. I walked 50 paces, maybe 60, and I dropped again. That's when I found myself here. So Fiaker's likely still out there somewhere. But he's beaten. He's beaten. How went the battle here? We had more luck, I suppose you could say. Uh, though two of us, two of our group and many of the army did fall in the battle. Who died? Of us, we lost Thaddeus, the dwarf, and the halfling Osborne. The little one with the big balls. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the one who competed in the arena. Sure stuff, yeah. That's a shame. I liked him. <laughs> <laughs> of course he did. Of course he did. Yeah. There you yeah. go, Sam. I like him too. <laughs> he says, well. I'm not sure he was friendly. Now here we've chosen a new Morskov. Congratulations, Arden. And he walks up behind Aww. him and he slaps a hand on his back. And even though Eomer is wounded and limping, Arden still sort of staggers <laughs> for a moment. And he says, thank you, old friend. 
I hope I have your loyalty. And Eomer says, Of course. You know I'll always respect tradition. And he bows his head and uh, draws a dagger and he cuts his hand and he says, uh, An og scoff to a more scoff, as it always will be and always should. And uh, Fjallker cla- or, uh, Arden clasps his hand. Oh, no! Uh, Arden clasps his, his hand. His face melts away to reveal Fjallker. <laughs> bamboozled again. Bamboozled. A heckin' bamboozled. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> Nullius says, um, Well then, I'm glad uh, that the, the attack was successful. It would have been a shame if the Hayfolk were to fall. The valuable allies and good people. He looks to you and he says, I think our negotiations are concluded. I will return to the command tent to work on some planning and other things. See me before you set off from here. I'm sorry again about your comments. And he heads out. Uh, Princess Anerol says, uh, Well, if no one minds, um, if we'll all be vacating this tent, I suppose I'll be taking it. Is that all right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Arden shrugs and he says as long as you don't come into Lythric you're fine here and he turns back and he says I'm glad we had you as allies and I'm glad that we kept you around alright uh, forgive me is it now time for me to speak <laughs> most exalted fellow you may <laughs> thank you I have been dispatched uh, to look for your, well, I was told five, however I am told that two of you have uh, met the end at the ends of Ox, is that correct? yes. Ox. Could you not simply have ducked when they threw rocks at you? Or? <laughs> so you have not put the same works that we have Evidently made. not. Yes. Regardless, uh, I was dispatched on the... Uh, the authority of the champion, however, he was acting on the advice of uh, Yoen something, a, a human. Mm. The consort of Sir Elden Greenwright, as I understand. I, perhaps, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really keep abreast of the actions of most humans. Uh, I do understand the, some amount of suspicion that you might be feeling here. I am Nawin, and you are not. That is cause enough for there to be tension between us. Uh, perhaps you will allow me a moment to <coughs> more formally state my intentions then. Hmm? As you will. I drop to one knee. You can see also that I, I'm carrying a big heavy crossbow on one hip and a big quiver of bolts on the other, and I have strapped a falchion uh, to my back like the ones that the uh, that Ardent's Yardbeard use. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, drop to one knee, and I say, <coughs> Yeah. In the far-reaching sight of the grove and the wisdom of its eternal champion, do I, humble warrior of the Isle of Mystery, swear loyalty to these three. I will walk with them as a travelling companion, and fight alongside them as an ally in combat, so long as I have strength to give. Their foes are mine, and my blade and my skills are theirs to command. I will not seek their destruction or misfortune, nor lay claim to more than is my due. This is my word, given, till our task is finished, and our victory or death assured. Grove, blight me if I lie. Cyril Maudit, humble blade dancer of the Narwin, and ally at your service. I'll say to you in Narwin, rise, warrior. Alright. <laughs> Someone who can speak Cyril. <laughs> it has been a very long time. <laughs> at least, I was an humble blade dancer. It has been a number of days since I was able to uh, test my skills in combat. I feel that I may have become rusty. I spent most of the previous few days dragging a large bear on a sled. Uh, is there one of you who could uh, help assuage my anxiety to make sure that I have not lost my edge or uh, my edge? Cousin, do you carry those axes for decoration or can you actually Are you swing fight? Is that what you're asking? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what I'm asking. I don't actually need it to be a whole combat, just that that's yes. one carries my Will you dance with me? I don't answer. I just simply like swoosh over my my little thing and like grab an axe <laughs> <laughs> bow, bow, bow. I'm, I'm gonna take a seat and just watch and say just don't kill each other and I'll take care of whatever you guys do I will not seek your destruction in this culture <laughs> thus was my word given alright so yeah let's uh, do it let's do it let's do it okay let's do a fight <laughs> oh really? <laughs> woo
Pew, pew. I didn't really want to fight, fight. fight. We'll, do one, two, <laughs> we'll just do a couple rounds. Okay. Yeah. Go go to like half health or something. Okay. Okay. So roll initiative. Yeah. First yeah. blood. Oh wow, I rolled real poorly. Uh, this should be interesting. Though. I got you. I got a sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> we have already seen one of our real battered in the arena for sport. <laughs> <laughs> this maybe is entertaining. Uh. <laughs> It's been a while. It's great. You get to go first. All right. Uh, I'm going to uh, move in close. <laughs> and uh, I'm pretty fast. I'm not quite as fast as you are, but I'm pretty fast. And so I just <coughs> step in close and then bring my blade up and around uh, and then reverse it back the other way. And I'm not trying to draw blood because, you know, I'm not actually trying to hurt people. Uh, but I've got two swings coming in. Wow. Wow. Uh, I did a 12 and a 15, so I don't think either one of those is going to do it. They do not. <sighs> um, I'm going to action surge. <laughs> yeah, you should. Right, your quick twist sends your there we go. straight yeah. into your enemy's guard. <laughs> An 18 and a 22. Uh, Ooh. Those will hit. All right, I got seven. I also need and to five. With a second agile swing, you cut into your enemy. 22 total damage from those two hits. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh-oh. Um, uh, and then as I uh, as I do so, I'm going to mark her. All right. Uh, and then as my bonus action, I'm going to assume kind of a parrying stance using the oh, yeah. master feet. How much was that? 20? 22. Uh, okay. Um, well, does a 15 hit you? No, ma'am. All right. Well, more than a 20 will. There you go. Um, so let's get rid of one of these and then put that over here. Um, 12... Pretty fast. I'm pretty speedy. 18 plus 16. <coughs> 19 plus 16. 30, 35. 35. That's how much damage you did? Yeah, I used my special axe. Oh, oh there you go. And then I have a plus 8 now. <sighs> so. Did right. you got one hit? hit? Yeah. Uh, no, that was. No, it was. It was Two hits. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, she gets to attack, attack, and well, then... I just, I only heard face. the one that hit, and that right. blew my mind. I was like... Right. So well, I had a 16 <coughs> and a 17 on the dice, so I figured that hit. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So is that my turn again, then? Yep. All right. Uh, I've got two hits. Uh, nat 12 and nat 14 with a plus 8. So that is 5, and then 4. So 9 plus 10, 19 more damage. All right, you swing your weapon with a graceful arc of absolute surety and right. terrifying beauty. Dance around to the back of you, and again, assume a parrying stance. Yeah, okay, I'm at 17, so <laughs> I'm going to stop, but I also want to hit you again, okay. so I'm going to hit you, but then we're going to... Then after I hit you, we're like, oh, they are done! <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, all right, we're good. <laughs> Did you hit me? Uh, yeah, twice. Uh, so that doesn't hit. Um, one, You're probably going to get me. Uh, I was, like, right at half health after your first round. So, but I think I dropped you below half in the first hit, didn't I? Yeah, you did. You did your math wrong. Oh, wow. oh did I? Yeah. Which ones? Uh, she did 35 to 20, 21. Mm -hmm. 21. You have 79. Got a lot of ones in that one. Oh, yeah. I'm, oh, I'm not even in half. Whoops. I did my math wrong. Did your math wrong? No. 21. 21? And then after I hit you, I'm like, wow, really good job. <laughs> really, really good. good fighting. <laughs> yep, yeah, okay. I think you're genuinely just impressed. <laughs> All right. Which is well, really, I'm not very charismatic. It's, uh, it's well, I rolled a nat one on my answer check. Uh, so, uh, well, it's good to know that I'm not entirely decrepit as of yet. All right, uh, now, group hug, come on, shake hands. Oh, well, I like that. We just and as they shake hands, that. I cast a healing lance at them. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name, Craig? Uh, Cyril Maudit. Okay, well. Cyril, C-Y-R-I-L. Oh, I actually have to write that down for actual records because I need to be able to spell that. Hey, there you go. Um, oh, two L's. Greg. Oh, no, it's just one L. Greg, Cyril. Greg, 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 do it again. Cyril, C Y R I L. I thought you said Cyril. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. That Cyril? Are you serial? Are you serial? All the Azorics are about to my become serial killers. M A U D I T. Where it's easy to get a great night's sleep. Okay, I did it. Okay. We're good to move on. So, do you want me to like actually restore their health, or do we just do we, we just, just heal? Say, okay, yeah. we're, we're we're good. Okay, uh, so uh, forgive me, Felder, but uh, I'm left uh, somewhat in the dark on what exactly it is that you are doing. I was told that there was some uh, threats of fiends 
Fins, I believe, is the word that was used by the champion. You just pointed at one. Uh, <laughs> Do not confuse the man. Now, <laughs> that was not mentioned in the letter. What? You see, this is racism. <laughs> I am... I am esteemed no, 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 I have uh, foul hearts. <laughs> and I am... <laughs> Is he staying in this... Uh, For God's sake, he's got a demon inside of him, uh, says Evian as she comes walking out right. of the Of course you are still here. It is a long story. Someone with the wits about him. Wonderful. It is a long story and it is not a problem. I have everything mm. under control. Except for, yes. you know, whenever he let it... Managing a beast inside of you. Mm. For but you have control. Okay. Except for that one time whenever he let it <laughs> take over him and then he, like, attacked me several times. And I Pitiful we cast to a beast that. inside of you. I don't remember that. I do it well. I remember that. It happened. I too remember it. I saw it. Yeah. It shows a certain uh, weakness of character. You were quite tenacious. <laughs> you did a really good job. You almost killed him. To allow the beast you inside of you to gain control of you. It shows something of a That was a lovely character. speech you provided to us. Perhaps you would like to say to me. <laughs> Beg your pardon. We are hunting these orcs for their uh, treachery, as it were, in attacking first Aberdovi, where we Island. we met, <laughs> and uh, oh, then yeah. following us around the ways, displacing villages as they went. Mm. Mm. It seems that <laughs> there may be other forces at play in the manner of these fiends of which you have heard. I see. And you have met them in combat? They can be struck with blades or <laughs> spells? I assume you are some sort of mage. I am... Uh, yeah, I, yes. Uh, I am... Uh, I am sight-touched of the fellows. I am the only one who <laughs> would... I am the only one living who would know of this, but whenever we went to fought... To, f- to fight <laughs> the uh, orc sorcerer, we found a carcass with lots of fiends. Um, the fiends were inside of flies that were devouring the carcass. We did, you know, a little bit of experimentation. Uh, they really don't like the light. They shy away from it in a very real way. Mm. Are lights ones, in general, or...? The radiant light. Ah, I see. No, you I understand that. Osborne's fire had no effect, but mine certainly did. And Bless made them really upset. You also have a fancy axe that you got from uh, the Dreamer that we totally we kept totally forgetting about. <laughs> You're right. This axe. <laughs> I will, uh, I've never given you stats for it, have I? <laughs> nope. I'll do that here in just a sec. Cool. Okay. Nice. Uh, I see. So they can be killed, and we don't really know how many there are or. We, know, we, know, we may know much more. Uh, Thaddeus mentioned that he was able to uh, take something from the corpse of this dreamer. Do, do you have it? You're talking about the axe or the, mm, talking about no, the eye? The eye. Uh, I produce the eye. <laughs> what? I don't give it to you. <coughs> I don't give it to you. I just... I reach for it. I... Blighted and burned. You appear to know more about it than I do. Well, I have a, a thought. Uh, I see it. Much as I determined that Thiakar was the know. reason for um, what is our that? companion's death. But it looks like a fancy ruby with a symbol on it. And it is a fancy ruby with a symbol on it that was in possession of this dreamer. If I can speak with it. The arcane. He can talk to literal things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's very pleasant to be working with a sorcerer. It's very impressive. <laughs> it would be most unpleasant to be working with a sorcerer, I assure you. I am much more learned and uh, capable. I see. Next session is going to be fun. I was distracted, <laughs> if I may. <laughs> I trust I you. Saw. <laughs> I trust you enough. Is it is it transparent? Like uh, a little bit. You, it's it's fractal, so it's, it's not right. purely it's translucent. Trans- yeah, it's, it's translucent. It's not purely it's transparent, transparent, but you can sort of see through it. What what became of the um, priestess of the blue? Was it that we saved? Yeah, uh, she's she's still at Lytherik. Yeah, she's just all beaten up. And yeah, resting. she was welcomed into Lytherik, being a uh, a priestess of, okay. of the same faith, even though she's not a Yarbeer. Gotcha. So the uh, the eye that's cut into this thing is it like an engraving? Just cut so out? It, it it's yeah it, it's an engraving that's then 
once it like it's been cut out, sort of like a, a metal die. That's cut out. Yeah. <coughs> right. But like then the ones you can get. But then, uh, like the ones you can get from Dice Dungeons in our giveaway that we'll be announcing when we return from intermission. They're right but, up here at the bottom left. Um, I'm doing that for Sam because he's it's, not here to point. It's the just like left. that. All right. Worry, except that, whatever. like on on this purple die, for instance, you see that there's there's white lettering there. It's been painted white. It's actually gilded on the inset. Cool. Okay. Yes, once we have some time, I will learn much from this object. There's much to say, I'm certain. Mm -hmm. Just gotta away. I see. Perhaps. I'm not terribly familiar with the ways of mages. So, in well, no I would be happy to educate you as we go on our travels. I'm certain that the experience will be both enlightening and thrilling. <laughs> no idea. I could go on for the. Uh, uh, <laughs> we should stay focused. I'm such a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Surrounded um, by elves who all hate each other. Hate? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Yes, quite an interesting predicament you find yourself in there. <laughs> well, if you're ever tired of the elves, remember that you do have friends at the Hayfolk. The princess tells me that she will be accompanying you. Good luck with that. <laughs> As for me, I return to my lord to report on the success of our mission here, and on your quick thinking with the orcs and all. <laughs> she also tells me that those missives that you had uncovered, they've been decoded, and she has them for you. Fantastic. Any time you need a place to stay, the Hayfork is open to you. We are friends and allies. Yeah. Comes visit whenever you need. Alright. And so we shall. And uh, she's gonna mount up and head towards the hayfield. Nice. <laughs> yeah, um, we haven't met any humans that know who I am yet, right? No. My, my guys and I wandered no. around a bit. Nobody's recognized okay, you. Okay, that's good. Yeah. For the uh, proficiency, it took it uh, dropping my intelligence <laughs> yeah, Nothing to I worry about. Take, uh, Great. Decoder, or, uh, I know the one you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I... Yeah, yeah. Keen mind. No, no. 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 Linguist? Yeah. No, it was, it was oh, like it's a proficiency. Oh! can't remember what it's called. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Cryptologist kit, or whatever. Gosh. Crypt... crypt Cryptographer's tools. Wow, ah, there we go. Yeah. I got there eventually. I bet. All right, cool. I bet this will fit really awesome. well. Uh, so, what do you want to do? Yeah. Well, um, where do we need to go next, then? Well, um, Nalius and Arden both asked you to go talk to them before you left. Uh, the right. princess is here. You could speak with her. Uh, any of them might have stuff for you to do. Uh, or you could just leave and just go <laughs> You just go away. You don't even care. Just walk into the ocean. I'm sure there's some orcs go somewhere. <laughs> no, we we'll should. walk until we find them and then we we'll kill them and keep walking. The entire campaign and make it about boats. <laughs> yes. yes. That's, that'll be the fourth time that yeah. <laughs> for the Colby campaign. He said that the random encounter table has the bit. What's the What's his name? Uh, Garkul Akar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Garkul is in the random encounter table. Not anymore. So if not you anymore. walk around... Uh, Zonak, you mean. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah, Garkul's... If you walk around in walk the around. forest for long <laughs> enough... <laughs> it'll be it's like, not, this is not Final Fantasy. No, it'll, it'll, be like, wonder. <laughs> it'll be like Pokemon. Like, it's a rare encounter. That's all. We just walk around in the forest and eventually we'll find the rare Garkul Akar. He's got a 25% chance of showing up, but that's a 0.5% chance. Um, There's well, one said, out of every 200 but, encounters. But, we get three of those a day. All right, enough goofing. Uh, what are <laughs> There's never options? enough. Well, knowing that, um, well, um, we heard that the the missives were decoded. Right. So I want to go to the princess and see if she knows about that or if she has them. All right. <laughs> if she knows so you want to just head into the like, tent that yeah. she's yeah. climbed? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, she's sitting there and she's already had uh, two of her knights set up a table for her where she's got these uh, missives laid out. And she's nice. Like, I thought you might want to see these. My father said you were quite um, pushy about them. You thought, uh, pushy, is that how I came off? <laughs> <laughs> Those might not have been his words. <laughs> Pointy-eared twit is his word. <laughs> I am curious to see the, 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 their findings. Uh, so what has come of these issues? All right. Um, she, says, uh, <laughs> she says, it seems the orcs have... Um, <laughs> found some sort of uh, barrier 
to their attacks, and she she heads over to the uh, to a map. To the map. And she says, um, the map. Oh, stop that immediately. Here. <laughs> ah. Um, just east of uh, of the Crow's Gate. She says, is a, a small holding known as Raloon. Uh, Raloon is uh, ruled by the Baron Gislang. He uh, he calls himself a Baron, though he has no overlord, so we've always wondered why he doesn't proclaim himself a king. That said, he's young, and he's not half the man his grandfather was, but for some reason, the orcs fear to attack him. Oh my God. He has also sent us aid. Oh, <coughs> an offer of aid. He says he's willing to swear to the Council of Freeholding Lords and join in our fight against the orcs if we can deal with a problem he's been having. <laughs> Apparently... That is tremendously suspicious. <laughs> Apparently, uh, he believes a curse has befallen the barony and the spirits of the forest are out to get him. Hmm. Mm. Well, the spirits oh. of the forest are nothing to fear. Oz would have been really have good to go in at this. Oh, it sounds like the orc have been it from us. Uh, she says, the second missive that you uncovered, the one that uh, you said you took directly from the assassin that she seemed to try to take so that you could not find it, details the Crow's Gate. Do you know the city? Uh, I myself have not been, though it was on my itinerary for the drop to the way. I believe I have been that way. Excellent. <laughs> for those who don't know, the Crow's Gate is the city once called Alatis, home of a mad crow. Famously corrupt it is, but a powerhouse, and very near to the academy. That is why. Oh. <laughs> it <laughs> controls many of the resources of the academy. She, uh, she says, it seems <laughs> the orcs have agents there, infiltrating it. Hmm. We're not sure what their plans are, but if the Crow's Gate were to somehow fall, as unlikely as that might be, though their leaders are a filthy sort, they are a powerhouse in this part of the world. They're important to keep on our side. That one should be easy. We'll just go there and find the orcs. I would imagine the orcs have not snuck, snuck into the city as his eyes or his joke. Ah. The third missive plan to me. is outdated. It details the attack on Oglesby, which you already know of. Mm. Either of those would be good targets for your party to hit next. And as I said, I'll be accompanying you. So I have, uh, mm. I have with me a friend, and she gestures to one of the knights, uh, who, who you see that this guy is not wearing any kind of heraldry, he's just wearing armor. Uh, and he's already unstrapped the, the breastplate and taken off the helmet. He's only wearing the, the leg plates now. And he says, Hello? Arvin, Flockmaster of Pigeons. Pigeons? That's right. Oh my Something gosh, I love him. He says, uh, he says, yeah, I'll show you. And he walks over uh, to his horse and he, he pulls off uh, some blankets that are covering a right. bunch of pigeon cages on either side of the horse. Ah, you've brought a messenger with you. I see. That's right. Oh, Harbin is the best messenger you'll ever find. I can get a pigeon anywhere and okay. get one back from anywhere. I am immediately engrossed in the pigeons. I love birds. He says, you want to feed one? Toss it How I feed the pigeons, and I am just feed so happy. Birds. It's right. like, I like sing to them, and I like coo with tuppies. them. Put it back. Coo. 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 Yes! I thought she was only like this with corpses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a few questions then. What? Uh, what? Inspiration? Inspiration? I, I, I told you. Welcome to the party. <laughs> um, she says, there's one more thing that um, we should investigate. My father made a good point. The orcs have never made it this far south. They're hell knights of a mare the crow. They fought inevitable. They've always stopped the orcs. They've always kept a watch, but we receive no warning from them. Hmm. It's in dangerous territory. Fort Inevitable lies here. That is a fair distance. 
and it's far within Orc held territory. Mm -hmm. But if we could reach it and determine what happened to the Hell Knights, we might find some of their equipment. They, they have many legendary weapons that sword there. And we might be able to determine what exactly is the power behind these orcs. Somehow they were able to deal with a legion of ruthless knights. Oh, yes. Might be worth investigating. The Draconian you mentioned that uh, one of the orcs had strange uh, powers and was carrying some odd artifact. Perhaps the orcs have made a deal with some kind of uh, spirits, some foul arcane threat. I don't know. Even the Hell Knights might have trouble with something like that. My nursemaid told me stories of spirits, but we've seen very little to, to see such things. But you did tell us tales of what you encountered at the bluff. I suppose it's possible. I know of the, the Orc religion. They do believe that spirits are in everything they do. Um, the spirits of life and death. But in, in the case of this dreamer, who uh, our companions sought after, uh, he was in possession, in fact, he wore this glass eye that is marked by no orc sigil. I think you may have, maybe on the right track, that there is some other force at play in the orcs, but we do not have nearly enough information to nail it down yet. I think of the places you mentioned, we should likely stop by the Crow's Gate first. It is on the way to the other options, and it's holding uh, holding the gate would be valuable for this interview. Is yes, it's it's quite the powerhouse. It's positioned there in the centre of all the rivers of the waste. Keeps it the wealthiest city around. They're the only one with any real army, any city by themselves. Of course, the Hayfork has an army, and there are other other groupings of lords that can muster troops and of course each lord has his his militia but they they have a real army mm -hmm. and your pigeon knight would be invaluable for the journey so I'm glad you brought him along <laughs> well I'm glad to be along thank you very much it's been quite a while since I've gone on an adventure I think he's great I think he's valuable <laughs> great. I think he's obnoxious. And don't worry, I would say right out of the way, I will. Out of harm's way, I imagine. I certainly hope so. That said, if it's me or the princess, I'll take me every time. I'll protect you. He's just almost Bert. You're almost doing Bert from Mary Poppins. With oh voice. yeah, me almost, or the princess, yeah. I'll choose me every time. <laughs> Um, Lucky can be. All right, she says. Well, <coughs> I've got my things mostly prepared. You let me know when you're ready to head out. Very well. We will talk to the leaders, of course, Nullius and Arden, before shoving off. But uh, I understand that. Yes. Very well. Speaking of leaders, uh, who is it that gives the commands? Yeah. Oh, the... Ah, mm -hmm. unfortunate. There's a change in leadership. It's never me. My presence here is so my I. <laughs> Assumed that that might be the case. That is what? so. You. Would it be you then, Master Fellow? Uh, we are an uh, autonomous group of individuals. No, I understand, but someone has to be the one giving the commands. Go there, fight them, fall back. Uh, Don't steal that. He's right, you know. If, uh, if it comes down to it. I realize I, we are not quite so subservient as a legion of undead, but... Uh, <laughs> you can see if with a... If only I could control undead as well as I could in the group here. Her face dripping with sarcasm. Um, That's the terrifying. Princess, the princess, yeah. <laughs> the princess says, uh, well, it's a, it's a damn shame that we've already sent home Evienne. She would command a king, if given the option. Was that the sharp-tongued young lady? <laughs> I rather liked her. It is a shame. Uh, it is a shame. She would be missed. My face dripping with sarcasm. <laughs> yeah, dripping so much that it messed up the word shame when he tried to say it out loud. It is a shame. Yeah, sorry, sarcasm. Oh. You couldn't even say it. It, was, it wasn't genuine. Yeah, the sarcasm got in my mouth. Gross. Just, you cannot command the undead. You are 
<laughs> you are a fellow. It is uh, a when side you effect I am certain of. Besides. What about Grippa? That's, that's, <laughs> that's not quite This is different. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, I mean, he still does what he wants. Mm. Uh, yeah, his spirit does, but not mm. his body. Glad to see at least one of the three of you is as I expected you to be. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's me, though, right? Nope. No. Because sure he's not a vicious, sure bloodthirsty monster. <laughs> Did and you want to know about that axe? Oh, yes, please. All right, so, um, the axe is clearly of orcish make. Okay. Uh, and it, I say axe. It's a it's a glaive, really. Aha! Um, Perfect. And uh, on it, Outward. you can see orcish characters carved. Um, and you can see... Um, you can see that uh, that on it are carved um, some craggy hills, and it, it looks like it's a tale being told all around this axe okay. uh, on on the blade of it, on, on the head of it. Yeah. Um, but you can see uh, there are, there's people here who like can decipher the the work language. I think stuff. he can. I could. Yeah. Well, well, then I'll I'll give it to you eventually. For so for the only orc language <coughs> it is is just this one like line of runes, like a column. Okay. Um, the rest are just images that are are carved, and I say carved, but it's really more like it, it looks masterfully crafted. This axe, it's it's old for sure. Mm-hmm. It's certainly old, and it looks masterfully crafted. What's interesting is that the um, the head of the axe looks to be this almost a black steel or black iron. Nice. But these images are sort of where you see them, they're not carved into it and they're not drawn into it. It's as though they were carefully poured a different color steel, a different kind of steel into the head of the axe. It was somehow maintained there. And so the black sort of fades into a brighter silver in each of these images. That would have been just unspeakably difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's something that nobody could do nowadays. Yeah. Nowhere. Not an orc, not a, not a nobody. Okay. Even the academy probably couldn't pull yeah. that off. Maybe Halfling could have, but he's dead. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Halfling the Holy Armor, who uh, who created several of the weapons of the Knights 13, might have been able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And forged the golden bow that then became Scarborough. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, he's dead. He was no. killed in the Vampire War. But but that's where the name is. But, uh... It's Jetson's weapon. What do you want? As you look it over, you see several images. You see one um, of an orc roaring, his eyes alight. Uh, and several other orcs cowering in fear. Uh, and you see pointing mm. at him another orc holding this glaive. You see um, one of the images on the other side. Uh, the orc, and he's wearing sort of a... He's wearing sort of a, a, a laurel. Uh, it's that same orc holding the glaive. Okay. And he's he's got like... Around him arrayed just columns of little circles. Um, you see... Uh, you see an army of orcs charging into battle. No! No! Literally against a wall of fire. Oh. And you see a city burning. And amidst the city, the orc with the glaive held, clasped, burning with it. Hmm. Nice. Right. You want to attune to it? <laughs> I will attune to I it. I could identify it. You're first. unable to. <gasps> Maybe you gotta be an orc. There seems to be something holding you back from unlocking the power of this weapon. Oh. Although an identify spell could tell you what it is. I will do that as a ritual. All right. Uh, after ten minutes of looking over this axe, you discover that the only way to truly attune to it would be to decipher the tale told on the axe. You'd have to get it pretty close to what's going on and tell it to um, at a fireside packed with eager listeners. <laughs> if you did so, you would then attune to the axe. Cool. All right. I'm going to need a description of... 
the like like later. Just All right. Send me. Yeah. But what kind of axe is it? I'll think about it. What kind of axe? It's a yeah, it's, it's a glaive. Oh uh, no! I mean, what like does he get the magic properties from it? All or? the magic properties. All right. Yeah. Um, or does he not get those mechanically? Yet? Um, this uh, axe gives or this glaive gives the wielder uh, advantage in charisma checks meant to inspire, bolster confidence, and instill bravery in others. And um, because of its, uh, this is not a magical property, but because of its fame among the orcs, mm -hmm. it would give advantage in intimidation checks against orcs specifically gotcha. while it's oh. visible. Um, it also allows the wielder to use their reaction to interpose the blade of the axe, broad and thick as it is, between a successful attack made against them or an ally within five feet and its target. Doing so grants the shielded person plus two to their AC as though under light cover. Uh, against that attack. Nice. Once per day, should an ally be subject to a charisma save, they are advantaged on it if the wielder of the glaive is in sight. Uh, the benefit is invoked by the ally at the point of attempting the save, however, not the wielder of the glaive. Cool. Uh, so we just call it. Right. Neat. The whole glaive, however, it's, it is pretty heavy and is unwieldy to anyone with less than 17 strength. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> what do you have? Sixteen. Oh man. Well, we just hit. Uh, yeah, he, he upped his con as well. Right. You could. You could. Retroact. We haven't really done I, anything. Yet. I'd let you retcon that if you mm. wanted to. But it's up to you. I if not, lose. if not in four levels, it's available. It's also a magical plus four one levels. Glaive. Plus one plus though. One. <sighs> yeah, I'll retcon. Oh, All right. It's going to be hard to attune to this thing. Mm -hmm. I know, but do you gain any of those benefits not attuned to it? You have the only one you'd gain is the intimidation check against orcs. Right. Everything else you have to be attuned. Interesting. Are we going <coughs> later tonight with because of our story? maybe a little bit? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Right. So uh, before we head off to meet with Arden and with um, Melius. We will go ahead and take our intermission. And, viewers, when we return, we'll announce the winner of our giveaway. Uh -huh. So be back in 10 minutes at 8.16 to find out if you won. You can still enter right now. Do it Facebook. right now. Do it right now. Go, 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 Tell go, go, them how to enter. Oh, uh, go to our Facebook page. Are we still? Okay, yeah. Go to our Facebook page, <laughs> and it's the pin post, and it'll tell you how to do it. You get the like our page, and then you have to like the photo, and then you're entered, and you're good. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. All right. <laughs>